Welcome to Let's Chat with Julie Lewin and the Cancer Talk series, where we delve into the triumphs, challenges and resilience of those touched by cancer, exploring stories of hope, healing and empowerment. I'm your host, Julie Lewin. Thank you for joining us. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat with Julie Lewin. And today I have a really special guest, Kelly Rhymes. And Kelly reached out to me after listening to our podcast and said, I think I want to be on your podcast. And so we had a chat and I agreed with her. So here we are. And I'm just going to give you a little intro to Kelly's background because it's absolutely amazing. And I can't wait to get into a deep, juicy conversation with you, Kelly. So Kelly is a confident, bald woman. Yep, you heard me right. She has overcome her own struggles with hair loss to help other women facing similar challenges. She's a certified transformational practitioner and through her coaching program, Limitless Mindset Coaching, she guides women through building their confidence and embracing themselves for who they are and helps them overcome any other emotional challenges in regards to their appearance. She has personally experienced the transformative power of building herself up and has learned to let go of negative self-talk and fears about how, how others perceive her. Kelly now walks with confidence, and you, you'll hear that in her voice, I promise you. And she receives compliments and admiration from strangers. And she is dedicated to helping other women feel free and empowered to be their authentic selves. You are speaking my words, Kelly. So let's get into this conversation. So I think the very first thing I said to you was, oh, my goodness, how beautiful you are. And... (laughs) I'm just going to say that again and tell me, tell me what started your journey with your hair loss. How did that happen? Well, realistically, it happened because of alopecia. Mm -hmm. Now, I didn't know I had alopecia at the time. So I was in my late 20s when Mm -hmm. uh, I first noticed a bald spot at the top of my head. Right. And I just thought, you know, maybe it was my styling practices or, you know, Uh different things that may have caused my hair to come out a little bit. So I I was like, okay, well, let me just take time to nurture it and let it grow back in. But that spot continued to get larger and larger. Yeah. Yeah. So eventually I did go to a dermatologist and he did tell me that I have what they call scarring alopecia. And that is the nickname, but it's scarring alopecia. Right. It basically just, causes my hair follicles to die and hair just to come out (laughs) and not ever come back and not ever come back so my follicle actually comes out with my hair so whenever yeah whenever I was experiencing that hair loss I can actually see the follicle on the strand of hair and I'm like okay so no it's not coming back (laughs) no wow and so how did that affect you Well, at first I was in denial. I was in a lot of denial. um, Mm -hmm. So I spent a lot of time and years covering it up, uh, trying to find my own solutions, trying to talk to doctors and physicians to say, hey, what else can I do? So just trying Mm -hmm. to figure out a solution to get my hair back because I was not accepting that my hair was not coming back. I I just thought that there was something I can do to get my hair back (laughs) until finally I just was like, okay, no, it's time to embrace it and accept it. And then, you know, that's when I I started a whole nother journey. That must have been tough. Very, very much so because I didn't want to share it with a lot of people. The only people who knew were my close family, like, I mean, my mother and sister, not even my entire immediate family. And then my close friends. They, they were the only ones that knew. So I really just covered it up. I just wore wigs. I wore extensions, weaves, head wraps, whatever I could do to cover and camouflage the hair loss. So what made you go completely bald? What, what catalyzed that? Well, so that's when I got to the point 
to where I was tired of covering it up. I was tired of wearing the wigs. I was yeah. living in Arizona. It was hot. Oh, hot. Yes. So I was I was just ready for a change. I was ready to embrace myself for who I am. Mm -hmm. And also I was just ready to move forward in life. And I wanted to make sure that when I when I was moving forward in life, I was presenting myself as myself. Authentic. Authentically. That's where your authenticity comes. Yep, exactly. So that so, motivated me to get started in working on myself and getting my mind right to cut my hair back off and yeah. really officially embrace this look. And I have a story that but I want to hear first. Okay. When you went bald and you cut it all off. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Well, this is a two-part answer, okay? <laughs> yeah. Because I cut my hair off one other time, and I was uh -huh. not prepared to cut my hair off. I had to cut it off at that time because I got a hairstyle that basically took my hair out. Ooh, so ouch. I was going on a cruise the next day. I had no choice but to just shave my head and just go with it. So at that point... It was horrible for me. I was not prepared. I was insecure. I felt like I looked like a man. I felt like I looked ugly. I had all of these negative thoughts, no matter what my friends and family were telling me, how you know beautiful I looked and all of the things, I did not yeah. feel that you way. You didn't feel that. Yeah. Right. So that didn't last that long. It might have lasted a month and a half until I put a wig back on and I wore a wig for an entire year until my oh. hair grew back out to a certain point to where I was comfortable with trying to style it or, you know, do my thing. Mm -hmm. This time, and this was years later, I want to say between the first time I cut my hair off and the second time, which is now what we see, yeah. it had to be about, oh, 10, ooh, 10, 10 and 14 years. It was a long Goodness. time right, before I cut it off. Wow. Again. Yeah. yeah. So Did second, people treat you different when you had your head shaved? Well, so I felt like at first they did. The first time I cut my hair off. The second time, no, they didn't. <laughs> because at that point, the second time I, I prepared myself, I was mentally prepared. I was like, I'm ready. And so my outlook was different. My mindset was different. And therefore, I received a different outcome. So I had all right. positivity. People embraced me. And I, I loved it because that's how I felt on the inside. Like, I embraced me. So it was it was much better. <laughs> right. Well, that's awesome to hear. Because uh, I think it was uh, maybe maybe 12 years ago. I can't remember how long ago it was. Mm -hmm. I just woke up one day and... I, I, I work as a medical intuitive and back in like 1995, I think it was, mm -hmm. someone rang me and said, would you see my nephew? And I said, I was exhausted after the TV show that I was on and thousands of people wanted to see me mm -hmm. and I, I was exhausted and I really needed a day off mm -hmm. and I said no I haven't got any space this week she rang me four more times and begged me to see this little boy oh. she said he's got leukemia mm. and um and I said okay so I gave up my day off and I saw this little boy and it was one of the most extraordinary experiences of my life in seeing this little boy who had relapsed, he couldn't have a bone marrow transplant. He was on blood transfusions. He was on morphine and he was very angry. Oh. And um, he was actually bleeding out of the pores in his skin. Oh. I know, I know. It, and he was, he hadn't been able to walk for six weeks. He was in oh. a pram mm -hmm. and he was four. And he wouldn't let me uh, connect with him energetically, mm -hmm. but he said, could I have a glass of milk? I said, of course you can. Mm -hmm. Mum and dad are looking at each other. So I got up and got him a glass of milk. And then he uh, said, can I lie on your sofa? And I said, of course you can. So he lay on my sofa, had a little nap, and I just chatted with mum and dad. Mm -hmm. and then. He got up after half an hour and he walked 
to the pram. It was like three or four steps. And okay. mum and dad burst into tears and I said, have I done something wrong? Because that's my first thought. I've done something wrong. And they said, you don't know this, but he hasn't walked for six weeks. Uh-huh. And all the blood stopped, stopped coming out of the pores in his skin. Wow. I hadn't even touched him. Uh-huh. And I said to him, could I just put my hand on your foot? He looked deep into me, like as if he saw the core of my soul. Uh-huh. And he made a decision and he said yes. And so I just put my hands on his foot and uh-huh. I tuned in and I could feel where all the the leukemia was really giving him a lot of pain. Okay. And so I said, you've got pain here, 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 and here. And he just looked at me, his eyes went big as if, how do you even know that? And he said, yes. And I said, would you like me to take the pain away? And he said, yes. So I just held my hands there. (laughs) And he actually left pain free. Wow. Which was amazing. Yes. The story is that all the anger went out of his body, Mm -hmm. all the aggression, and he was at peace and he was calm. His parents just kept looking at each other. And I gave him a little meditation to do. And he passed a few days later. Okay. But they said to me, he was so peaceful. And that was the gift that I gave them that Mm -hmm. he was peaceful and I knew when he had passed I I felt his soul Mm -hmm. and I rang the parents and I said has he has he passed and they said yes yesterday and I'll tell you the story that happened I, I I was kind of couldn't settle so I went to my drawer and this is where I keep my clothes Mm-hmm. I don't even remember having this in there. And I pulled the drawer out thinking of him and a poem on a sheet of paper that my grandma had written was mm-hmm. in her handwriting, mm-hmm. came out of the drawer and went like this mm-hmm. and landed on the floor. Mm-hmm. And the name of the poem was, there's an angel in my corner, my granny put it there. Oh. It comes to me in darkness and when I'm in despair. So it it was a full poem and I can't remember the rest, but I remember those first few lines because they really struck me. Mm-hmm. And I was invited to um, read that poem at his funeral, so I did that and I thought I'm going to paint the paper of how I do that. Uh, I'm just going to paint the paper and then calligraphy it onto the paper. Okay. I'd never painted paper before. And he came into my head and said, no, you don't do it like that. And he said, you have to put the paintbrush in your hand and you have to go like that. (laughs) And I went, okay. So I did. And then I waited for it to dry. I calligraphied it. And when I handed the poem to his mum and his aunt, I did one for each, they burst into tears and they said, before he died, we painted flower pots to remember him. And that is exactly how he painted the flower pots. Oh. I mean, what a validation. Yes. And so that's that's my story about this precious little man and... I, because he had leukemia, I just woke up one day. It was almost like he spoke to me mm-hmm. and he said, you need to shave your... We've got this thing in Australia where it's shave for a cure. So people okay. all around the country shave their heads mm-hmm. and raise money for the Leukemia Foundation. So I decided to do that. And I'm so proud to say I raised $4,000 when I shaved my hair. Okay. And um, so... I loved, loved, loved my head shaved. Mm -hmm. I felt beautiful. I felt strong. I felt free. But what I noticed was other people treated me differently. 
Mm-hmm. And some people walking along the footpath would see me and cross over the street. Mm-hmm. And they didn't want to walk on the same side of the street as me. Okay. And then because I have had cancer, but I didn't lose my hair with cancer. Mm-hmm. And I was in the lift at the hospital having my annual visit uh, to just have my checkup. Uh-huh. And there was a girl in the elevator and she looked at me with such compassion in her eyes. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, no, it's okay. I'm I'm all good. But she thought that I was really struggling with chemo and right. the cancer journey. So that was that was such an interesting time for me. And I wanted to keep my head shaved and and I got my my mum kept saying, Julie, just grow your hair back. She couldn't deal with me with shaved head. Uh-huh. But I loved it. Like I seriously loved it. It was I I felt like an Amazon, you know. I, I felt tall and proud and empowered, and Ooh. and that's why I asked, "How did you feel? How do you feel as a bald woman?" It's freeing. It really yeah. is because yeah. after so many years of always trying to figure out what is my appearance going to look like today? What is my hair going to be today? What is going to happen today? Like it was a constant thing, even going on job interviews or whatever. It was like, okay, if I go to the job interview today and my hair looks like this and then I get the job and it looks like another way, then what, you know? So it was a constant thing of worry, stress, a little bit of anxiety because of my appearance. But once I cut it off, oh, it was just so freeing. I just so much relaxed, you know, relaxed. Yeah. The anxiety went away. It was just like, okay, I'm good. I am officially okay and happy with the way I look. That's fantastic. And so doing that led you on a new career path, didn't it? Yeah, but not immediately. Not immediately. Because I actually cut my hair like this in 2019. So I I didn't immediately start the journey of helping women with hair loss. No, because I wasn't ready to share my story. I I would have little voices or, you know, little nudges come to me like, you need to talk about hair loss. And I'm like, no, no. (laughs) (laughs) Go away. Yeah. I'm not telling the world about my story. No. Yeah. Uh, But eventually that voice, it got stronger and stronger. And it was just like, okay, it's time. It's time. And and I felt that it was time at that point. It was in my heart. I felt it was Uh, time. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I have to now. Was I still afraid? Yes. Yeah, I, that's so good. Yeah, I still didn't want to share my story, but I had to. And the first step I did was created my website and uh-huh. I recorded my story. Now I have good to record job. it a couple times, but recorded the story and I put it on my website and I'm like, it's there. Done. Yeah, good job. Good job. <laughs> yeah, look. Those nudges that we get from the universe, Mm -hmm. we still have free choice. Like we don't have to do what the nudges say. Mm -hmm. We still have free choice, but the nudges won't leave us alone if that's our purpose. And so we just have to make a decision one day about what we're going to do about it. And when we, so that's actually a moment of surrender, right? Yes. When you go, okay, oh, I'm going to do this. That is a moment of surrender. That is also freeing. It's almost like that's a similar experience to shaving your head off. When you say to God, universe, whatever word you want to use, Mm -hmm. okay, I'm done living my life like this. I I will walk this path. And I seek your guidance and then a whole new world opens up. Would you agree? I agree. I am still on a faith walk. Yeah, it is a faith walk. I love that. I've never heard that. Mm -hmm. It's a faith walk. I am just blindly taking Mm -hmm. action. And Mm -hmm. I don't know what one day it's going to look like versus the next, but I know I'm I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Same. Yeah. <laughs> so I Same. totally get it. I totally agree. 
And I was actually coaching in a different space because my background is in real estate investing. So I was actually coaching in a different space. Yes. That was my skill set. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to just do this because I know this, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But still in the back of my mind, I was like, I have a higher calling. I have something more to say. I have another way to serve that's even higher than this. So then I realized when it came to me, like, okay, officially I'm, I'm supporting women with hair loss and and authenticity. I realized that that was a stepping stone. That was just to prepare me for this. And I I recognized that and I'm like, wow, you know, it's just like amazing how you kind of see things and recognize things. (laughs) This is, this is the thing that you can't go from this to that there are steps along the way. Mm -hmm. And if you fulfill those steps, then the greater picture is revealed. But if you had been given this picture over here before you shaved your head for the last, like had hair for the last time, Mm -hmm. you would have gone, oh my goodness, no, that I'm not up for that. I can't do that Mm -hmm. because the jump is too big. But what happens is God gives us smaller jumps to do to make the adjustment, make the the stretch, like it, it is a stretch to mm-hmm. do even the little jumps. But we grow and we get skills and we get confidence to take that next jump. And then suddenly we realize, oh, yeah, now I see the picture. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's I, the journey. And I'm just excited about the journey. Like, I'm yes. just excited about what's going to happen next. <laughs> I know. That's what I say, too. I'm so excited. And I don't know if I told you this in our other chat. When I had surgery in 2000 for cancer, the next day I woke up and the surgeon came and saw me and I had a voice and he would, it was like, Fireworks were going off. He was so excited that I had a voice. And then he came to visit me the next day. I had no voice, like zero voice. He was so devastated. And that's when he said to me that the the vocal cord nerve was compromised and he had to cut roots of the cancer away from my vocal cord nerve. And he wasn't sure if I would be able to speak again. I didn't speak again for a year. Really? Really. Oh I did God. not have a voice. Mm-hmm. And so they told me to wait. They said it might come back. It might come back. So I waited 10 months and they put a camera down and they said, oh, well, you may never speak again because you've only got 5% movement of your left vocal cord. And the... They were very blasé about it. Like, seriously. Like, is it that nonchalant? Really? It's just Yeah. He, he, oh. he wasn't a very nice doctor. and uh. but, he, but he did say you could try speech therapy and sent me to a speech pathologist. And she said to me, she was very, very upfront and straight with me and said, I believe I can help you, but you have to do the work. If you don't, and she actually pointed and she said, if you don't do the work every day, then you won't get your voice back. And I said, I'll do the work. And she said, Julie, you actually have to do the work. I said, I'll do it. And so I went home that night and I said, God, if you give me back my voice, I promise I will share what I've learned. And then I had a, so I went to my therapy, Mm -hmm. but every day I did the exercises for an hour. And I was so embarrassed at what was coming out of my mouth that I got in the car and I drove around the suburbs for an hour. So I was on my own and no Uh one could hear me. Mm -hmm. And I just got strength. And what I had to do was use the air in my lungs to make the muscles in my, around my vocal cord do the work that the nerve did. 
Okay. And so then I could make sound. But if I get really tired or I've spoken for a long time, like let's say I'm I'm at a conference and I'm speaking all day, mm-hmm. then my voice gets weaker because I'm everything's strained. Okay. But generally my voice is is quite strong. But that was you know, I had to do the work. Yeah. And I, I think that the point of my story is that if you want something, you have to do the work. Yes. And, like, you wanted to feel free. So the work for you was not doing um, speech therapy. It was getting the confidence to be authentic. Yes. And show the real you. And what happens when we show the real us we have deeper relationships, would you agree? Oh, yes, definitely deeper relationships. Yeah. Definitely that inner beauty comes yeah. shining out. You know, yeah. it's just automatic. It just comes out because you feel good. Because you, you feel good and you feel free. Yeah. Yes. So what have you gone on to do now? Where Where are you with your career now? What are you doing? So now I am supporting women with hair loss. So Mm -hmm. I'm still in real estate investing. I spend about 10% of my time in real estate investing. Mm -hmm. And then 90% is me coaching, supporting women with hair loss. And not even just hair loss. Let me make sure I say (laughs) authenticity in general, because I hair loss is just my story. You know, yeah, that's right. That's why I asked the question. Yes, yes. yes. So, but the purpose and mission is authenticity in general, whatever you may be going through that is affecting your confidence. Mm. I'm here to help rebuild you up so that you can hold your head up high and move forward in life. Because this is what I say to everyone you still have a life to live. You know, you can't let whatever it is that has happened or is Mm -hmm. occurring stop you. You still have a purpose. You still have things to do. So let's get you to the point to where you can not worry about whatever this thing is that is affecting your confidence. Let's get over that so we can focus on that purpose. Do you work with people that have had chemo and they're on a cancer journey and they've lost their hair? So I work with anyone who has Mm -hmm. hair loss. Yeah. Yep. Anyone with hair loss. So it does not matter I mean, it's all still the same thing as far as the mindset. Now, the thing is that makes it different is that everybody has their individual journey. So therefore, the sessions are tailored to those particular people. Like it's not a one and done. It's what do you need? Where, you know, what are your traumas? What are your Mm -hmm. triggers? What do we Mm -hmm. need to work on and focus on for you? Because each journey is going to be different. Correct. Correct. And I think... That reminds me of a story of a friend of mine whose daughter had um, cancer and I can't remember what sort she had. Mm -hmm. And she lost all her hair. I think she was a 10-year-old. And so she did face painting on her head. Mm -hmm. And it started a whole trend with all the kids in the ward where the face painting on their heads, they – They were proud. They were confident because they didn't see their hair loss as a limitation. Right. They got to do something the other kids couldn't Mm -hmm. because they had face painting on their heads. (laughs) Isn't that awesome? It is. And you know what I did just for this Did you do it? I did for the first time, but now... I think I might have done too much, but I did a little bit of temporary tattoo. Oh, Can you see it? Oh, good job. I did. I think I did too many. I think I should have just did one little one right here and left the rest alone. But I was experimenting. So it next looks time, so lovely. A little, I'll just do one. <laughs> Is that a rose? No, it's a, it's a, a flower. Yeah. You see it? Yeah, it looks like lovely. Like a little feather and I have something else of another feather here, but I'm like, I'm just playing around with it. Let me see. Good job. Good job. I'm so thrilled that you did that. Yes, I, but I am going to do it again. Mm-hmm. Just, just one next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then you'll start a new trend. Right, right. Yeah. Maybe. We got to see. I have to get the look together first and then I think 
maybe it'll be a trend. <laughs> I know, I know. So, well, what, why, just want to know more about the inner work that you did because my my whole purpose for this podcast is not the outer work, it's the inner work because what the world sees about us, it's not what's going on inside. Right. Yeah. And so I, I know from personal experience, if I want to change my outer world, the only way that I can do that is to work on my inner world. And so I go and I work on myself every single day. It's the last thing I do before I go to sleep. I have my routine. Um, What do you do for your inner work? And do you do work daily? What's your journey been for the inner work? So for the inner work, well, I can, I have different stages. So yeah. in the past, when I was preparing myself for, to cut my hair off and mm-hmm. to have this with a bald head, I did a lot of getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Yeah. So working on myself in that way. So I would do things that prepared me for a shaved head. So for mm-hmm. example, I shaved, or not really shaved, I cut my hair down really, really low. And mm-hmm. I, it was just like a little short, boy cut and I used hair fibers to cover up the thin and balding spots and I wore my hair like that for a while just to get yeah. just the shortness and then yeah. go out to eat to dinner by myself or to lunch and just do okay. different things like that yeah I also prepared myself and just kind of journaled and got those emotions out got those mm-hmm. fears out yeah. I myself kind of just like, hey, we got to let go of some of these negative identities because I had adopted negative identities, right? So let me yeah. let this go. My hair, knowing my hair does not make me. I had to let that go because that was a part of my identity. Mm-hmm. I was attached. So I yeah. just had to let a lot go. Like you said earlier, surrender. Um, yeah. I just had to just stop and just Focus on the new me. Focus on what I wanted in life, right? Yeah. What I wanted my life to be, how I wanted to present myself. Now, though, my daily work is just doing things like meditation, yoga, Mm -hmm. walking. Mm. Um, If I need to journal something out. Now, I don't do it every day, journaling, but if there's something that's coming up within me where I'm like, okay, this is bothering me a little too much now. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Journal it out. Let's work on myself. Um, I also process myself because, like I, you mentioned, I'm a transformational practitioner, yeah. with a modality called Rapid Rewire. So I have different tools that I use mm-hmm. and work on myself to just kind of eliminate these negative emotional charges that may come up every now and then. Yeah. So those are the things I do just to stay healthy, to stay on top. Yeah. If there's yeah. a person who I need to reach out to for support for some reason. You do it. I'll do it. You know, Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of that. I I get with the people who can help me. I want to talk on that because some people, I'm not saying all people, but some people feel that if they reach out and ask for help, that they're a failure. Mm. No. That's just not true. So what's your response to that? Reaching out for help is just self-care. Yeah, that I, that's all it is. And yeah. I know I, and a, a lot of times people going to or, or therapy or, you know, things like yeah. that. It can be taboo for a lot of people. Mm. Um, mental health is taboo for a lot of people. And don't they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to deal with it. They don't want to acknowledge yeah. you know, that something's happening. Yeah. But really, you have to. It's just even if it's not a therapist, there are so many coaches and so many healers and so many different type of people out here. There yeah. is something you can connect with that you yeah. can help you. And one of the things that I talk about in my book is, uh, oh, and my book's The Art of Self-Healing. Um, mm-hmm. One of the things I talk about is how important it is to have a confidant. And a confidant is not your best friend. Mm. A confidant is someone that you can be the real authentic you and you can reach out and you can have a chat. And what I found the best confidant to be is someone who's not involved in your day-to-day life. Mm. 
They okay. don't know all the people in your day-to-day -day life. And a confidant is someone that you can reach out to and say, I need to process something. Do you have time? I don't need you to fix me. I just need to talk it out. Mm -hmm. Can we chat? And all they have to do is listen and ask really good questions. Mm -hmm. That's what a confidant is. Right. They're not trying to solve your problem. They're helping you outwardly process. Mm -hmm. And I remember my grandma, I used to ring my grandma a lot. And I wouldn't even know why I was ringing her. And I'd just talk and talk. And she would, mm, that's nice. That's nice, dear. Or she'd ask a question. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go, oh, my goodness, Grandma, I feel so much better. Thank you so much. And she'd say, but I haven't done anything. And I would say, yes, you have. You listened. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. She listened. She didn't judge. She didn't criticize. She didn't try to fix me. She mm -hmm. listened. And I, was, I worked it out myself. I said, oh, now I know what to do. And she'd go, that's wonderful. And then I'd hang up and go and do it. And so if you want to be that person for someone, that's the greatest gift, I think. Yeah. Is to actually listen fully and not be thinking, oh, I'm going to say this when they stop speaking. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You, mm -hmm. you actually have no thoughts about what words are going to come out of your mouth. You're listening. And that is what a confidant does. And I, I'm glad you talked about that and explained that because I, I think that's awesome. I mean, I might start calling myself a confidant. <laughs> yeah. That's, look, I felt guided that I was going to, I didn't even know I was going to talk about that, but I had a feeling that that's what you do. Yeah. <laughs> It is about listening. I mean, of course, mm. I do give tools because, you know, mm. I'm what, your, what are your goals? How do we reach yeah. them? You know, making sure they're accountable. So, yeah, we're doing all of those things. But it really is about listening. I actually yeah. had a call with someone. What was it? it was, was it earlier this week? or No, it was. No, it was last week. Yeah. I had a call with someone and it was like a discovery call. Uh -huh. And realistically, I just felt in my spirit. I was like, she just needs to talk. Because yeah. she didn't have clarity about what she wanted from me. She didn't yeah. have clarity whether she wanted help with real estate stuff or if she wanted help with her hair loss or her, you know, her confidence mm -hmm. because she needed help with both. And I'm like, yeah. okay, well, well, let's stop and let's pause and let's tell me what's going on. Yeah, I... good job. <laughs> yeah, tell me what's just going on. Yeah, let's just. Just, and I just listened and I could relate to a lot of different things in her story. Mm, yeah. And after she was finished, I, I told her, I was like, yeah, you know, I definitely understand where you're coming from, this, this and that. But in the end, it was more about, okay, you need clarity. So let's yeah. just, we have to go back and figure out what you want for yourself. Yeah. So I, I gave her an assignment. Now this lady, yeah. has a, she's not a client. She's not in yeah. it. She's doing a discovery call, yeah. but. I'm I'm like, I don't believe in just, you know, giving fluff to people, right? I'm, I'm really exactly. about helping people. So yeah, I'm not worried about money and you paying me for this. No, you need help, but you need to figure out what help you want and need. And yeah. then if it's me, okay, fine, I'm here. But if it's not, it could be someone else, but it, at least you can go get some clarity. Correct. I actually followed up with her yesterday via yeah. to say, hey, did you do that assignment? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so you know, it's it's that's a lot of times what people need just to get it off of their chest. Correct. Sometimes people just don't have that person to talk. They to. don't. They have people in their lives. Yeah. But they don't have that person where they can really just let it out. Yeah. And just be okay with whatever they say and their authenticity and just let it out. Yeah. And that's what we're looking for. And the the key is that they can let it out but whoever they're letting it out to doesn't feel that they have to fix it mm -hmm. that they're part of the fixing of the of the thing but the thing is then this this is another part to this process 
is if you are going to your confidant, go with the intention of finding a solution within you. Don't go with the intention of, and I'm going to be a bit crass here, (laughs) vomiting your stuff all over them, leaving it with them, and then walking away feeling, oh, thank God I got rid of all of that. That's not the the purpose of a confidant. It's not to for you to vomit all over them. It's for you to go have this space where they ask you some pointed questions mm-hmm. that maybe your friends or family haven't got the courage to ask you because it might trigger you or cause you to arc up or flare up or get angry. Mm-hmm. know that your confidant is asking these questions for you to get clarity because that's what you're seeking. You're seeking clarity. And there's this thing that I do, and this may help your clients as well, Kelly. Mm-hmm. I was scrolling, uh, and I'm going to be really honest here, back in May 2024, we did not have any income. We didn't get any clients. We didn't. Like it was like the well dried up and Mm -hmm. I've not ever had that experience. And I thought, what's happening? Mm -hmm. Am I on the wrong path? You know, blah, blah, blah. All of that was happening. Mm -hmm. And I felt very despondent. I hadn't been unwell, so my energy was fine. But I was scrolling at like midnight because I couldn't sleep. And one voice would say, go to bed, Julie, this is ridiculous. And the other one would go, just one more flick, one more, yeah? Uh (laughs) And I'm sure many people will relate to that. Right, right. And then this thing popped up, and I can't even tell you who it was because I read it or listened, and then I put my phone down and it just was gone. But I do this every night. Before I go to sleep, I do my normal routine for my Self healing, Mm -hmm. and then I say, Thank you for the solution to my problem. And I name my problem. And Tash actually, that's my daughter, Mm -hmm. said, You know what, Mum, you you voice your problem in a positive way, so that's why you're getting the results. Mm -hmm. And she said, Tell me some of the, the thank you for the solution to my problems that you say. And she said, Jeb, you definitely voice it in a positive way. So I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the solution to my problem where I want my home to be mortgage-free and we own it. Okay. Yeah? So see how that's a positive take on, I'm not saying thank you for the solution to my problem of being in debt. Mm -hmm. I've actually named that I want to be mortgage-free. It's a little mortgage. Like everyone would love to have my mortgage, but Mm -hmm. I don't want a mortgage. I want to be mortgage free. Mm -hmm. So that's how I phrase it. I don't tell the universe how to do that, Mm -hmm. but that's what I say. So that's one of the ones. Another one is thank you for the solution to my problem of having more students in my institute. No word of a lie, Kelly. I did that. The next day I woke up and my inbox had an invitation for me to speak to a group Mm -hmm. in like six weeks. And so it was locked in for that date Uh and I spoke and I signed two new students to my institute. Okay. So that's just one example of that. Thank you for the solution to my problem and naming the problem in a way that gives you the outcome that you're looking for, but not telling the universe how to create that outcome. I can't tell you, I have been on the most magical ride since that day. Since okay. that day, every day, I'm excited to wake up and check my inbox. Mm-hmm. And you are one of those magical things that happened. <laughs> you popped into my inbox and I went, hell yeah, I can't wait to chat with you. But that's me. And mm-hmm. I might have said something like, thank you for the solution to my problem. I need more people on my podcast. 
and the the thing that's happening is we've got people coming inbound. Mm-hmm. I'm not reaching out. People are coming in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when people come in, they really want to be in your space. Right. When you're outbound and you're reaching out, those people, they don't know you. They haven't discovered you. They're not invested in that connection. Mm-hmm. So what I've discovered is when I do the inner work and I call thank you for the solution to my problem before I go to sleep and let my subconscious do it and, you know, the energetic field do the work, mm-hmm. have such a rich life. Like my outer world is reflecting the inner work. Mm-hmm. And that's what I mean by doing the inner work. So... How do you do your inner work? Well, I will tell you that in the mornings and before I go to bed. Yeah. (laughs) And I'm like, and because I have to think about it because the TV is usually on when I go to bed, before Uh I go to bed, but I still have to do it. But I do give gratitude. Like when I first wake up, yeah. I don't do it the same way you do it, which I like the way you do it. So I'm Mm -hmm. gonna give it a try. So thank you for sharing. Let me know. Let me know. But I just say Thank you, in the, especially in the morning. Just thank you for life. Like, thank yeah. you for waking me up. Thank you for everything in my life. Yeah. All, just giving gratitude to whatever I need to give gratitude for. And mm. even when throughout the day, when certain things happen, let's just say, like you said, you, you get a new client or something yeah. big happens. Yeah. I'm always like, abundance, abundance. <laughs> like, so everybody in my house, they know if they hear me say abundance. <laughs> good has happened that's awesome i do different things like that and yeah just making sure i stay on a positive note whether that's just looking at music looking at uh-huh. positive things on tv just a lot of different things but i would say the biggest thing for inner work is going to be the gratitude mm. and the journaling when i need to and the processing myself when i know i have those those yeah. negative emotions coming up can i talk about giving gratitude because You know, that's been around for decades, actually, as Mm -hmm. a a way of um, bringing positivity and higher frequency into your life. And I I used to do a gratitude journal, but you know what? I realized that I was doing it by rote. I was doing it because someone said that's what I needed to do. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day and so I would sit there and go oh thank you for my bed thank you and but I wasn't actually emotionally connected to Mm -hmm. what I was writing Mm -hmm. and so that's why I stopped and I started living with awe and wonder and finding the awe and wonder in moments and going oh my goodness how amazing I use the word amazing I use the word awesome a lot because that's me giving my gratitude how phenomenal like I use those adjectives or those I don't know if it's an adjective or a noun adjective or a noun but I use those words because when I'm saying that or even thinking it I have this rush through my body of joy Mm mm-hmm that I don't even need to share with anyone because it's nobody's business. Right. But that's how I live an ordinary life in an extraordinary way. And that's my, that's my goal is every day I live an ordinary life in an extraordinary way. And I cool. find the awe and wonder. <laughs> and so if writing your gratitude journal isn't working for you, maybe you could, this is to the audience, maybe mm-hmm. you could look for awe and wonder and I I heard that in Australia there are communities of people that look for awe and wonder every day like Facebook groups or something and they Mm -hmm. share the awe and wonder that they've experienced and I thought how awesome is that yeah to be able to share that magical moment because it is a magical moment isn't it yes it is and sometimes people have, you may have to test it out just to believe sometimes. I know Correct. I have to because yeah. if you've never practiced it or you need, you know, you didn't learn it, you're, this is new to you, 
you may you have to start small so you can be like oh okay i see i see yeah. that this so yeah. i remember one thing i did i had a coach mm -hmm. and she was helping us with our mindset and yeah. one thing that was just think about something that would normally never happen right yeah and yeah. just set an intention and you know put that out there so my thing was it was the middle middle of winter uh-huh and so i'm like okay if i see a bluebird then you know i know something's going on here right yeah forgot about it because again this is how it works you just put it out there to the universe leave it alone let the universe do, do its thing and yep. you know wait for it to happen right all of a sudden i i don't even think it was like a month later and it was yep. still winter i'm sitting yep. in the park and i'm actually sitting in the car in the uh -huh. park yeah and I was relaxing with hanging out with a, a friend of mine and i look up and there's a blue jay in the tree which is crazy because it doesn't <laughs> happen yeah 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 and so in that moment what what went through you like oh it was excitement it was yeah. like oh my goodness i see you know like this was yeah. it was confirmation that okay i understand I, I i have an understanding of how this works you know yeah. So then that just encouraged and it motivated me to continue to do more and work on myself even more because I'm like, okay, here we yeah. go. Because I really I like that because you set an intention for a sign. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was the sign that that was so meaningful. And I did exactly the same thing twenty mm -hmm. or twenty five years ago. I went because, you know, I had this big mission in life, at, which <laughs> I'm actually living right now, but 25 years ago, that's a long time ago, uh -huh. I said, God, if I am on the right path, you need to show me with an orange feather. And I thought that an orange feather was so far out of the wheelhouse that mm -hmm. it had to be special, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember being in Sydney with a friend and we were walking at Bond. Bondi you might have heard of Bondi it, it's a famous place in Sydney okay. and she lived at Bondi and she said we're going to duck through this deserted arcade to get to my house it's a shortcut and my whole energy like I'm going I don't think so I don't think so I don't want to go that way she said no come on I do it all the time it's fine and I said I, oh, I'm not confident. We were halfway in that arcade. It was dirty. It was dim and it was windy. And I looked down and I saw this very, very orange feather. Wow. I still have it. I have a little beautiful little bowl about that uh -huh. big and I put all my orange feathers in it. And so I have collected many orange feathers along the way. I could have five years between orange feathers, but I always see an orange feather when I'm at a crisis or a, a, a fork in the road mm -hmm. and an orange feather pops up and I go, okay, thank you. I'm on track. And mm -hmm. that's where my gratitude came in, in that moment. And, um, but that first one, was like a dyed orange feather from a boa, you know, like you oh, have a feather yeah. boa. Uh -huh. And it was in this dark, dingy uh, arcade that I was too scared to walk up. But that gave me the courage to do the things that I'm scared about mm -hmm. because the orange feather was there to say, good choice, you're on, you're doing, you know, you're, you're overcoming fear where mm -hmm. there was no need for fear. Yep. Confirmation. And so, you know, well, thank you for helping me remember that story. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Look back at things. It's yeah. Amazing how it is. You get it these is. signs, these symbols, these things. And it's, I don't know. I can't even explain it because, again, I didn't grow up learning these things. No. See? Things that I had to learn on my own, you know, uh -huh. reading or coaches yep. and things. Yep. 
so it's just like I wish I would have known. And now I do try to instill things in in my kids because I want yeah. them to know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. This is how things work. <laughs> yeah, it's magical, like so magical. And so we're going to wrap up. I have loved having this chat with you, Kelly, so much. What would you like to say to our community? Well, I would like to say uh, or reiterate what I said earlier. Regardless of what is happening within you or to you at this moment, if you feel like you're losing something, like I felt like I was, I lost a piece of myself with hair loss. Yeah. You have a a life to live. You have a purpose. You have joy. You have love. You have all of the things. So make sure you focus on what you need to focus on. So Mm. I understand it's not going to be easy all of the time, no, to push past your fears and be your authentic self and all of the things. Mm -hmm. But it's necessary in order for you to be in the position that you're supposed to be in in life. And that's just it. Yeah, well said. And I'm going to add a little bit to that. I had um, a client who really taught me the magic of this message and you said something it may not be easy but you need to do it and she would say I know that's not possible but what would it look like if it is possible Mm. and then I changed that to I know it's not easy but what would it look like if it is easy oh yeah yeah. Yeah. And you ask yourself that question before you go to sleep at night. <laughs> Another one. Oh, Another one. Fun tonight. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> we have some new rituals here. Oh, okay. I know. Hey. I know. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Kelly. Thank you so much for sharing your joy and your enthusiasm for life with me and our community We have talked about setting intentions and finding signs and rituals before you go to sleep, gratitude. We have talked about so many things, having the confidence and feeling empowered to be our authentic selves. You and I are walking that path and we hope that you can all follow us along that path as we pave the way living our authentic selves. So thank you so much for joining us. And if you love this podcast, please like, share, do all the things. And if you want to be on our podcast, then reach out like Kelly did. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, a, I'm a nice person. Yeah. I'll have a chat. And uh, if there's someone that you think would be a good guest, then, then let us know. And remember, the journey doesn't stop here. The, the journey of transformation is a daily thing that we do on the inner in our inner world so I hope that your inner journey is reflected in your outer world and you have an awesome awesome time so until next time I'll see you bye